watching Fox 11 News Special Report. Well, tonight it really is the Fox 11 News Special Report. Good evening, I'm Alex Michelson. And I'm Marla Tejas. And look who's here, Jay Leno. It's a very slow news day, as you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> In the house to talk about his new show, You Bet Your Life, which airs right here on Fox 11 every night. We're going to talk all about that in a moment. Sure. But first, like on your show, yeah. we got to get to the news get first. Get to the news. Right? All right, some COVID headlines to start. Okay. Pfizer today, Jay, announcing uh, what many parents have been waiting for. Kids 5 to 11 years old could be eligible to get the two-shot <laughs> vaccine by Halloween. Pfizer says it's asking the FDA for emergency use authorization after its study shows younger kids responded well to a lower dosage of the vaccine producing a robust immune response. I talked to a local pediatrician who has been following the study closely. She says these results are encouraging. There were very few side effects seen. It was tolerable. And Pfizer also reported that there were zero cases of myocarditis, which I know is something that everybody has sort of been on the lookout for. And so that's very reassuring. Dr. Tanya Altman there, she's out of Calabasas. She calls the study well thought out. The kids' dosage, by the way, equals one-third of the adults. The FDA is now looking at the Pfizer study findings to make a determination. Big story happening right now in West Hollywood, where the city is considering ratifying an executive order to require verification for city facilities and indoor businesses the mandate expected to be approved unanimously. It would apply to everything from restaurants to nail salons that handle clients indoors. You're going to have to show proof before you can walk inside. The CDC, by the way, reports that California now has the lowest coronavirus case rate in the whole country. Figures compiled late last week show that weekly cases in California have dropped 32% from one month ago due to the state's success in controlling the highly contagious Delta variant. The CDC credits that success on California's high vaccination rate and the willingness of people across the state to wear their masks in public. We're a couple days out, Alex, until fall. We think of fall, we think of the colder months, winter months, and that's what health officials are really concerned about is another surge. That's why there is a strong push to get vaccinated. All right, well, let's talk about some entertainment now. Okay, there is a buzz in the air today about the return of the Emmys. The star-studded ceremony was held in person last night after taking a year off to be held virtually. So health and safety was supposed to be the top priority for the event. Strict COVID, COVID protocols, right? Not everybody's advinced, convinced when they look at images like this and you don't see a single mask or any distancing and a whole lot of hugging and kissing. Phil Schumann, who's an expert in all of that, went digging for answers today. He joins us live now. Phil. Well, Alex, uh, Marla, Jay, uh, last night at this time behind me, the uh, tent on the roof of the L.A. Live parking structure, now referred to as an event deck, was filled with about 500 celebrities enjoying the Emmys in person. And it got off to a somewhat controversial start with comments by comedian Seth Rogen. Hey, good to be here at the Emmy Awards. Let me start by saying there is way too many of us in this little room. <laughs> what are we doing? They said this was outdoors. It's not. Seth Rogen, it's hard to imagine anyone joking about COVID, which has claimed almost 70,000 lives in California alone. But he said what a lot of viewers were thinking and a lot of viewers talked about on social media today. Why is it that we in L.A. County have to wear a mask inside when all of those celebs were on top of each other uh, with no mask? Well, it turns out that L.A. County Public Health says for television productions like that, there are exceptions and that everybody that was participating in the Emmys last night, whether on camera or behind the scenes, had to have a vaccination and had to have proof of a negative COVID test in addition to that within the past 48 hours. So they say the uh, protocols observed last night were actually stricter than they normally uh, would impose for television and film production. And that's why uh, they were essentially uh, exempt from the rules that the rest of us have to follow. Was that good enough? Does that mean they're safe? Well, not really. I spoke to an infectious disease specialist, Dr. Leon Lee, about that this afternoon. And the ideal thing is to have them wear masks, unless obviously, you know, you're up for an award or whatnot, but try to keep the mask on as long as, as much as possible, um, and obviously between eating and drinking. Yeah, we saw no masks. No. And in fact, you know, the few ghosts of the team when I walk by, no one's wearing masks. They want have big smiles on their faces. And like I said, it's, it's great for viewing, but again, from, from a public health standpoint, it was not a great, not a great thing, a little alarming. 
Social distancing didn't happen. Tables separated by at least six feet. That didn't happen. But again, according to rules approved by L.A. County Public Health and gone over with by the ME organization, they were exempt from the masking and other uh, strict protocols that the rest of us have to follow, particularly um, at an indoor event, even though technically that was outside, Alex and Marla. I mean, the question is, it, that looks great. Why can't the rest of us adopt those same rules? Well, the rest of us aren't governed by the rules that were in effect last night uh, at, at all places. Um, they don't, you don't have to prove that you have a vaccine. You're on the honor system. You don't have to prove that you have a negative test. You're on the honor system at some places. Uh, I'm not saying that you, that's not a good idea to change those rules going forward, but that was the reality of what we saw last night. Yeah. All right. Phil Schumann, thank you so much. Uh, we've got a special guest here. You just got a preview of that. Uh, Jay Leno is here in our studio. Jay, great yeah. to have you. Vaccinated and everything. Yeah, yeah. you, you follow the protocols to I get in the building. The yeah, <laughs> we kept your attention during the news segment there, huh? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I did. It's, it's different in Beverly Hills. I got the Pfizer vaccine with a Madeira drizzle on a chocolate lime and biscotti. <laughs> See, it, it's different. The valley is different. You don't get that in the valley. Right. Just the yeah. comedy already yeah. coming. On this from. side of the yeah. hill, you get that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Jay is the host of a new show airing right here on Fox. It's called You Bet Your Life. We have a preview of that. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Kev, I know you've scoured the earth. Who found to play the game? No, a single. single. Oh, single, huh? Yeah. Kev. <laughs> Kev, stay in the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a stay-at-home mom with okay. four wild young men. Oh, <laughs> hopefully these are, these are your children you're talking well, about. Maybe not. Oh, maybe not. Whoa. Uh oh Yes, uh -oh. yeah, so Kev, I got to say, you know how to pick them. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, this is all about getting Kevin a date. That's the. Well, that's, that's the it appears to be. Jay had to come back to TV to get Kevin Eubanks a date. <laughs> hey, I, believe yeah. me, it's not an easy job. Yeah. But, okay, for, for the very few who mm -hmm. may not know, You Bet Your Life is a revival of the classic quiz show hosted by Groucho Marx. Right, right. right. And it's, it's basically a comedy show with a game attached to it. You know, when I would do jaywalking, talking to people out in the streets on The Tonight Show, we did that for 22 years, and that was basically an offshoot of what Groucho used to do, he, except he had the game show. And this show is not that much different from that. You bring two people in who've never met before, and they have to work together to win money. Uh, the difference is everybody's happy, everybody's smiling. Uh, the real key to success on this show is there's no politics. Mm. We don't discuss politics. Uh, because, you know, it's amazing how much people have in common if you don't bring politics into the mix, you know? And you can meet people, like I, I see this in, in the car community. I like antique cars. I go to places, and there are a lot of guys that are blue-collar guys. And I know, okay, maybe they might not have the... But when we talk, when we talk cars or motorcycles or engines, we're all on the same team and everybody gets along fine. Mm -hmm. Remember how good Thanksgiving dinners used to be before politics came in? You used to actually ooh, converse with Uncle Bob and all that kind of stuff. Now it's just gotten crazy and that's, that's what this show, there's no politics of any kind and diversity is also the key. We have a huge, widely diverse audience. We brought contestants in from all over America. And there's a tendency in LA when you do a game show to pull contestants from within a 10, a ten mile right. radius. <laughs> and they, they're wonderful right. contestants, but they're professional contestants. Right. You know, they, they're, they're not, they're they not if Brad City. Pitt cuts them off in traffic. Yeah. Yeah. Hey! You know, they don't, it's not Brad Pitt. It's a guy who cut them off in traffic. Right. And when you fly people in from Maine and yeah. Florida and Louisiana, they're like, oh my God, I'm here in LA and there's an excitement in the air that really makes it fun when they come out and they look around, the lights are on, well, there's a camera, and they don't know what to do. It really makes it a lot of fun. And they're strangers, which you did bring up that right, point. Right, they're complete but... strangers. And it's funny how when people are working toward common goal, my favorite one, we had a guy, an uh, African-American guy about 6'5", and tiny woman about 70, 75, white hair, about five foot one. And, and every time they got an answer right, this guy would pick her up like a rag doll. <laughs> like the, she was like, <laughs> And he's people girl, he put her down again, and then answer another question, you pick her up again. And they're high five and they're having the time of their life. And it's it's just fun to see people smiling and laughing. I mean, when you look at how much how angry people are on TV all the time, you know, every news story, I, I, I'm gonna get yeah. to the, you know, to see people actually smiling and have a good time, it it, it kind of brightens your day, I well, think. And speaking of laughter, when you think back on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno, the the constant soundtrack is Kevin Eubanks' laugh. Yeah, I mean, uh, during so much of it, or at least when he was there on the show with you. That's why um, we brought Kevin yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, talk to us about what what is it about him? Uh, why do you think you two connect so so well? You know, I, I think. 
and it wasn't anything that was put together. And, and, and you know, in Hollywood, there's a lot of put-together relationships. We want to have this, and let's get a blonde woman and this guy, and we make a team. And that doesn't always work out. It's like arranged marriages. Sometimes they work, but right. for the most part, yeah, it's not that good. Yeah. Uh, you know, Kevin was a guy in the band, and I'd be doing the monologue, and I'd hear, Jay, Jay, that, that last joke wasn't funny. <laughs> Kevin, I'm working here. And he would just interrupt. And the audience loved it, and I Aww. liked it because if he thought something was not good, he would call me out on it. Right. So it made it a lot of fun. And we did that for 22 years, and people seemed to enjoy it. So Aww. when this idea came, I said, Kev, let's do the show together. So that's what we do. Speaking of, okay, you, you no doubt you get offers all the time to do shows. Why did you want to do this one in particular? Well, you get off to a lot of game shows, but it's always the capital of Uzbekistan is what? You know, <laughs> I, I don't care about the capital of Uzbekistan. You know, we just have ridiculous questions, uh, you know, and, and, and you're just there to have fun, and oh, by the way, you can win some money. And it's not life-changing money, it's month-changing money. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you win like, the most you can win is $5,500. Yeah. So when people go double or nothing, it's not like, oh, you lost the house, you idiot. You know, it's, not, it's not that. It's just people having a good time. And that's really the key to it. That's the most fun part. Everybody's smiling. There's no politics. Nobody's arguing about anything. Do you have a favorite question that you've asked so far? No, because I don't know the questions. Because it's a game show and there's money involved, mm. I can't see the questions until I go out. Because you don't want to, you know, the legally you can't do whatever and so it's all off the cuff and it's all ad lib and it actually makes it i think sharper and funnier how does it compare to doing the tonight show versus well in this? some ways it's a lot more fun because on the tonight show i had to see the movie i had to read the book i had to listen to the album yeah. And you were terrific. It was a terrible movie, but you were great. <laughs> I, I enjoyed your performance and you know, right. whatever it might be. Whereas this, there's none of that. And I don't have to go home and write a six-minute monologue every night like you did. Because whenever we finish the Tonight Show, you had a good minimum six hours. To do your monologue? monologue? No, to put the monologue together. Yeah, minimum of six hours every night. So this, you go home and, oh, I can go home and watch the show. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Well, we, we want to talk more about comedy. Sure, uh, We also want to talk about about somebody that we lost that so many people loved, uh, which is Norm MacDonald. Oh, yeah. Uh, so when we come back, yeah. we're going to talk about Norm. And you taught him how to drive. Well, as much as you can teach Norm yeah. anything, yeah. So we're going to look back on that clip. Uh, we're going to talk also about Jay's stand-up and all of uh, where you can catch him and, and stand-up in the time of COVID, how comedy's changing. Uh, more with Jay Leno when we come back. You can't leave just yet. I'm not going anywhere. Okay, good. <laughs>